And joining us now for his insight into the selection and bracketing process is Charles McClellan, chair of the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Committee, a man who's about to get a day off. And Charles, we appreciate yeah. you joining us. I want to know, how much kerfuffle was there in Carmel over that fourth one seed? There was a lot, a lot of discussion. Obviously, uh, North Carolina got it. We looked at some head-to-heads with Tennessee, but overall, North Carolina had a magnificent season. They did what they were supposed to do in the regular season, fell a little short in the tournament, and that's ultimately why we gave them that number four uh, line seed on the number one, excuse me, the number one seed on the fourth line. So, Charles, it's obvious by these numbers that Iowa State wasn't even close. We were having arguments here about uh, Iowa State possibly being in that spot. Um, was it because of their non-conference strength of schedule? Iowa State, a magnificent team, great wins, great, you know, tournament. But we did look at that non-conference strength of schedule, and we've talked about this all along. We look at the entirety of the season from the first game all the way to the last, and when we added it all up, we felt like Iowa State was appropriately placed on that two-seat line. Yeah, Charles, we obviously had a lot of chaos in regards to what went on this weekend with conference tournament championships. We highlighted four conferences that had teams steal bids, if you will. Talk about the process of when that happens what is the committee doing in terms of moving teams in and out, if you could? A very difficult process, Clark. And ironically, it wasn't four teams. It was five because the Mountain West actually got a bid That's with right. New Mexico yep. coming in. So when you start talking about the selections process, this is the first time since I've been on the committee that we've had five bids that have been stolen. Wow. The last two years combined has only been three. So mm. it makes it difficult for us to be able to go through that process. And as those bids continue to get stolen, as a matter of fact, we were in the process of scrubbing at one point. Bid got stolen. That meant that we lost a bid. So we had to go back and wow. start the process all over again. We did not finish our process of scrubbing until 2 a.m. this morning. So it's a very difficult process, mm -hmm. one of the most difficult that I've been in. And I've talked to some of the staff that's been in this room over 20 years, and they said this is probably the most difficult selection process that they've been a part of. Wow, thanks. Well, I got to say, you look great for a guy who didn't get any sleep. 2 a.m. <laughs> is really tough. So to me, Charles, and the story it. about Indiana State is not that they didn't get in, and obviously I know they're disappointed, their fans are disappointed. It seemed like everybody in America was rooting for them. But if things had gone the way they had in the past with respect to these bit thieves, you have Indiana State as the third team out. So they would have been in the tournament, but for those late wins. Can you let us in on the conversation about the Sycamores and why they ended up really as close to being in the tournament as they did? They, again, they had a magnificent season. They had great metrics. But when you start to look at their non-conference uh, and the games that they played outside of conference, that was something that we had to take a look at. Again, under normal circumstances with those additional bids, they would have been in. But as Clark said earlier, when you start splitting hairs, you have to look at something, you have to find something, and that's ultimately why they were not in the field. So it was as difficult for you guys over the last 24 hours as it was for us to figure this all out. <laughs> well, for Seth, sure. he's, he's the bracketologist. It's a lot harder there. for him. It's a lot harder for him. Very difficult. Charles, thank you so much for joining us and uh, to the whole committee. Thank yes. you for, uh, for everything you guys yep. do. Thanks, and, Charles. Uh, and a, a well-earned day off.